three, two, one. One, two, three, four. Well, come take a ride. Come take a ride. With the weirdest guy I know, but it's Wednesday night. It's Wednesday night. And now you did it the, the Chris Gethard Show. Chris Gethard Show. Chris Gethard Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. We're very happy to have you all here tonight. I'm your host, Chris Gethard. If you're watching the show, we really appreciate it. Please go on Twitter, Facebook, let people know they can watch live streaming at www.thechrisgethardshow.com. And uh, please do call in. The number should be appearing on your screen if it's not already. It will shortly. Uh, before we get into what we're going to talk about tonight, I've got a lot of special guests joining me. Uh, my assistant, Bethany, as always, is here. Gethard Show regular Shannon O'Neill down there at the end. And then we have uh, some first timers with us. Uh, first, we got Mr. Matt Besser of the Upright Citizens Brigade. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Please, thank you. Thank you for being here. The man who, one, one of the people who built the theater where my, my comedic sensibilities were born. So yeah, it's, I'm the carpenter that built the theater. Yes, you are. <laughs> so it's fair on some level to say everything that happens tonight is your fault. Here? <laughs> yeah. I only built the roof here. That's true. We've also got the one, the only Mr. John Mulaney. Uh, John is a, you're a writer at SNL, one of my That's favorite right. stand-ups. You're taping a special here in New York on the 25th of August, yeah, right? Yeah, the 25th of August, if people want to come. Yeah, so New Yorkers should go. And Matt, tomorrow you're doing the back room at the UCB Theater. Yeah, uh, the back room, UCB Theater. You're going to be in it, Chris. I am going to be in it. So all What our, character are you going to do? I don't, do you want me to do um, the kid from Deliverance or Daryl Strawberry? <laughs> I kind of want to see the Deliverance guy. Okay, I'll do the kid from Deliverance then. <laughs> so if you're in Manhattan, you're out there watching, come to the UCB Theater. Go to ucbtheater.com. You can get tickets for that. Uh, and uh, you guys, your first timers, you might not know some of the people we have with us. We have back there in the corner, we have Random Gene, the Random one and Gene. only. Um, can I say something about Ramsey? Sure. She was jumping some of the lines on the theme song. Oh, yeah? Okay. Wow. Already getting notes, Random Gene. Oh, wow. Random Gene, uh, she, our second show, this is our eighth show we've ever done. She called into the show. She said, what is this show? Why are you doing this? And we said, you should come to the studio and hang out. And now she just does. She just keeps showing up. It's not a joke. It's not a bit. This is She's a done like six shows? Seven. This is your seventh show with oh, us out great. of eight. And you are, it's true, I don't know you. You are random. Yes. We have very um, brief email exchanges from time to time. That's the extent of our relationship. <laughs> and uh, as always, joining us, the mysterious man from the sea. We do not know much about this creature, except that he recently emerged from the sea. He's trying to figure out the world of men. Please welcome the human fish, ladies and gentlemen. Human fish, human fish. What's he thinking? Human fish, human fish, human fish. So mysterious. Human fish. So the, the human fish, yeah. like I said, we don't know much about him, but he always you can always ask him what's on his mind, and he always has some sort of internal struggle going on, oh, and okay. he'll explain what it is. So like human fish, what's on your mind right now? Sam Watterson versus uh, Jerry Orbach. Sam Watterson versus Jerry Orbach. Jerry Orbach. In just a living or dead contest? Wow, OK. Uh, we don't know the criteria. He never explains himself. Okay, cool. So who wins? Jerry Orbach. Jerry Orbach. He's on Broadway. Yeah. He was. Now, and so I know can you're, we ask him questions? You can, but he will only ask, answer in battle form, blank versus blank form. Okay. So you have to phrase your question as a battle between two He has things. scales that look like, like hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like what is that, what well, does that do for him as a sea creature? I don't know. I guess the way we can find out if their scales are hair is to say human fish, scales versus hair. Hair. It's a hair. <laughs> they're not, they're not scales. <laughs> they are hair. They are hair, apparently. He wears goggles to protect his eyes from air. Yes, he does. A new pair of goggles. Am I... <laughs> he upgraded. He has upgraded his goggles. <laughs> oh, that's cool. They used like to be blue. Used the TV he used the TV money, maybe, to get new goggles. <laughs> the, the massive amount of money we are making huh. through our that's public cool. access television show. I wonder what his eyes look like when they're exposed to air for those few moments. We'll never know. Really? We'll never know. Yeah, um, well, but we can say, though, <laughs> <laughs> we may, maybe by the end of the show. So anybody in the audience, on the panel, callers, if you want to call in, you can always ask the human fish what's on his mind at any given point during the show. Tonight, our call-in topic, we also want to hear uh, anybody who has a public transportation war story, subway, bus, train, plane, 
I wanted to do this tonight. We were going to do something else, but earlier today at about 3 in the afternoon, I was on an F train platform at 14th Street, and there was a homeless woman. She was leaning against the wall, and I saw she looked at me, and as I walked by, she waited until I walked by, at which point she loudly farted at me. <laughs> I was less than four feet away from her, and I stopped, and then she went, sorry. <laughs> so I got farted on today by a homeless woman on a subway platform, which made me wonder if we can get other people calling up with their, um, their public transportation war oh, stories. I, ha I have one. Okay. I was, I was on Easter Sunday, and I was in my, like, Easter Sunday bonnet, and, <laughs> and this man came up to me, and he was like, I don't want to be a creep or anything, and I was like, okay, sure, um, and he's like, and I don't want to sound rude, and I was like, what's up, and he's like, will you give me a hand job? <laughs> Did he say please? He was, he was so polite about it. Do you think it was and the I, bonnet that made that happen? It was the bonnet. <laughs> Wow. And I just, wow. my reaction was so small, I just walked, I just walked away. Like, I didn't answer. Maybe it's worked for him at some point. Maybe one time that worked. If that worked even once, you'd do it over and over again for the rest I, I, of your I life, right? I story. There's a guy that walks around New York, and there's no lie, and he just goes up to women just all day, just goes very quickly, do you want to fuck? Do you want to fuck? Do you want to fuck? And he says he gets one fuck a day. Wow. wow. So if you ask enough people, folks, it'll work out for you. So we encourage everyone to just start doing that all day, every day, immediately, from this point forward. Um, I should introduce, we have, a, we have a bit tonight that I want to get to before we even get to our callers. Um, if we can, I want to bring my, my friend, a good, very good friend of mine named PJ, up to this uh, mat in front of us, because tonight we're doing a bit that I already regret, and it's called Body Shots. <laughs> Okay, how are you doing, PJ? Good, sure. We've been friends for like four or five years now, now and yeah. we met through martial arts. We both did jujitsu together. Correct. I, due to being a coward and a weakling, have stopped altogether. You have moved on to Thai kickboxing, Muay Thai. Yes. So you're here tonight, and what will be a very painful experience for me, all of the people on the panel and in our band tonight have submitted facts about their lives. We're going to randomly draw those facts from an envelope from time to time. Hallie from the LLC will read them. It will be my job to match the fact <laughs> to the person. And if I get it wrong, it means I'm a bad friend. And what I deserve is a legitimate kickboxer giving me a body shot. And oh, you have assured no. me it will be horrible. Yeah, it's not fun. OK. <laughs> and I will say, though, for anybody who's watching who's worried, we've known each other a long time. The way we met was through this thing of, like, you're not going to try to hurt me. I might get hurt. Right. That's OK. Yes. We're friends. I'm fine with that. I'm trying to explain to you how this really can't hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you warned me. I asked you to do this bit, and you were like, it'll be really bad. And yeah. I was like, I know what I'm getting into. But I honestly don't. Yeah. I honestly don't. Yeah. But it's fine. And you are, you're for real. You've been training Muay Thai for years. You fight. You just won a fight at yeah. the Hammerstein Ballroom, right? Beacon Theater. Beacon Theater. Yeah. Beacon Theater. <laughs> Indeed. So why don't we just do this for the first time? So, Hallie, let's have our first uh, fact from someone's life. I don't like it either. I love it. <laughs> have you guys back, fought before? We have fought jujitsu jiu wise a ton like of times, that. but I've never had a striking match. But we've spent a lot of time choking each other out. <laughs> is it just punches or is it kicks also? It's, it's going to be a variety, yeah. Right. You're doing this at the top of the show? <laughs> yeah. This is how start. This is how start. So, what's our first fact? Who's the, okay, who's this the person. Post that takes over if you go down. Keep going conscious. I don't know. I mean, Shannon's guest hosted. Yeah. So yeah, if I if I get taken to the hospital, <laughs> Shannon hosts the rest of the show. And then I have to answer. It's up. Facts. That's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> up to you. I don't so, mean to shatter the illusion. Sorry, but is there something you can do to prepare to take a body blow? Tuck no. Your dick between your legs. <laughs> Engage the core. Engage the core. <laughs> Which, unfortunately, <laughs> I have no idea like what that star. means. <laughs> okay, so let's do it. What's our first one, Hallie? Okay, this person's fact is. I enjoy food like pig's blood and chicken feet at Hong Kong style dim sum places in Chinatown. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. I'm going to be racist and, and guess random team. <laughs> yes! Yeah! Yes! Awesome. Awesome. Woo! It's so good to be racist. All right. So, 
Well, I don't condone it or support it normally, but sometimes racism works. So I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry I guessed that, but I'm glad it worked. We have our first caller on the line tonight. Caller, welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. What can we do for you? Hello? Yeah, you're here. You're on the line. What's up? Hey, Chris. It's Greg Gethard. Hey, it's my brother. How you doing, Greg? Good, good. How you doing? I'm glad I didn't see you. I didn't, I'm glad I didn't get to see you die on uh, on cable access. Not yet. We still got like 45 Just minutes. Started. Yeah. <laughs> um, real quick before I get into my transportation story, um, I'm at Mom's tonight, okay. and you have mail from After Health and Retirement Funds. Okay. Um, do you want me to read it on, over the air for you? No, that's okay. This is the second time my brother has offered to read personal mail of mine. Uh, that's really okay. Uh, I hope that it's a letter that you don't have health insurance anymore and then you get kicked in the letter. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't let me know. I'll just leave it, I'll leave it on the dining room table. Uh, so what's your transportation story, Greg? Uh, well, uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, I was uh, going up to, uh, back and forth to Boston a lot. And I was taking uh, Greyhound, and I was taking Greyhound back from Boston to Port Authority, and this guy was sitting next to me, or in, in the seat in front of me, and he had like that like 90s like white guy dreadlock ponytail thing going on. And this woman came and sat down next to him, and she had like like a snake tattoo on her forearm, and this guy was carrying a bass guitar amp, so. Um, she sits down and they start talking and she's like, oh, do you play bass? And he's like, yeah, 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 I play bass. I'm actually a professional musician. And, and she asks him, like, oh, really? Like, are you in a band? He's like, yeah, I'm a session musician for G-Love of G-Love and Special Sauce. Okay. So for the whole rest of the trip, this girl goes, like, Beth, he's my favorite musician of all time. So for the next six and a half hours, I was inundated and forced to listen to a conversation solely about G-Love and Special Sauce. That's pretty bad, but I got fucking farted on earlier. <laughs> well, on Amtrak, well, I've seen twice this year the Amtrak train I was taking from New York to Philly has killed a person. Okay, so, so you witnessed death. So that's good. Wait, okay, yeah, that means getting farted on. Um, <laughs> Cool. We're going to get to the next call. Thank you for calling. All right, later, man. Thank you for checking out my mail. Thank you. Right. So, John, you, you've been in New York many years now. Do yeah. you have any, anything you've seen on the subway that, is, that has made you almost give up on humanity? Um, not, I've been not give up on humanity. Um, I have, I used to live in Greenpoint, and I would transfer into Manhattan through the uh, 23rd and Eli, Long Island, Queens. Stop. Right, you know right, that right. I do. <laughs> and I was coming home late one night, and there's this long hallway that you have to walk down in order to switch trains. And I was walking, and this woman was walking in front of me, and it was like 2 a.m., and she started walking really fast, and I thought it was because she heard the train coming. So I started running behind her, and she started running, and we ran all the way to the end of the hall, and then she like bolted down the stairs, and then I realized that she was running from me because she thought that I was going <laughs> to So you almost, in it, you, you convinced a woman you were going to rape her inadvertently. Was, she started to walk fast, and I started to run at her, run fast, alone at 2 a.m. And, uh, and the best one I've ever heard, I heard secondhand, though, so I don't know okay. if I can tell a secondhand Yeah, story. why not? Okay, it's very, I'll make it very quick. Uh, you can tell my story. Go ahead. <laughs> so the professor is uh, dressed as a woman. I chase him down the hall. Uh, there's okay. A friend of mine goes on a date in Manhattan. He's at the restaurant. He thinks he has to fart and he shits his pants. Okay, we all know that. So yes. they're leaving the restaurant. He decides I really like this girl. I need to get a new pair of pants. He goes into a Gap and he says he makes up an excuse. He's like, I just want to get like a sweater or something. He buys a sweater. He also buys a new pair of pants. Okay, and then he has them both in a bag. They go home because they lived in Jersey, so they get on the New Jersey Transit. They're okay. on the New Jersey Transit. He goes into the bathroom with his bag. He changes out of his pants and boxers. Uh, he throws them out the window of the train because there's no like garbage can that they could fit in. He opens the bag, and the clerk only put the sweater in. <laughs> <laughs> Second hand. Can't, can't verify secondhand, but a good story. A good yarn. Wow. Yeah. That's one of the worst things I've ever heard. Yeah. You know what I would do in that situation? You get the shit, 
and you spread it yeah. all over your legs and make it look like brown shorts. Yeah. You make those shit shorts and you just yeah. get right out of that trouble. Yeah. And why, she never why, asks any why questions. Why stop at shorts? Just do like Demi Moore full body paint yeah. and Com come out. You convince her you have like corduroy jeggings. <laughs> you make a mustache, you come out and say your boyfriend had to, had to go. There you go. Maybe You're the conductor. Like, um, maybe you'll look like a UPS delivery person. Yes. You yeah, could. Yeah. Random Gene, you nailed Gene. it. You knocked Random that one out of the park. So we have a very special guest here tonight. Just last <clears> week <throat> on the show, one of our contributors, Connor Ratliff, announced his run for he's running for president of the United States. His platform is, very simply put, you have to be 35 to be president. He is 35. Ladies and gentlemen, Connor Ratliff. Let's see how he's doing. Connor's running for president. Hooray! Hello, everyone. It's been an exciting week. Chris, thank you for having me on the show again. Uh, people of America, there's been a, what I would term a minor groundswell of support over the past seven days for my campaign. And so I'm happy to come here onto the Chris Gethard Show again for the premiere of our first post-announcement campaign television commercial. Please watch. Every now and then, if we're lucky, we are witnesses to a moment in history. A moment that we will never forget. The kind of thing that our grandchildren will ask us about when we are old and gray. So Connor, you're running for president. <laughs> I'm here to formally announce my intention to run for the office of the President of the United States. Wow. Woo! <laughs> Where were you when history was made? My name is Connor Ratliff, and I'm 35 years old. That's old enough to be president. Paid for by Citizens for a 35-year-old president. Connor Ratliff, ladies and gentlemen. So Connor, it seems like this week's video mostly recapped last week's video. We felt like it was a good time for a look back. Okay, one week in and you're looking back nostalgically at your campaign. There's one thing I'd like to plug. Okay, please. We've spent the past seven days developing an official campaign hand gesture. I did it when it came out, some of you may have noticed. On this, your right mm -hmm. hand, you hold up three fingers up high, and then all five fingers on this hand. <laughs> Got it. Got it. It's catching on. Thank you, America. All right. Presidential candidate. Let's go to another caller. Our caller, you are on the line. Welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. Caller, are you there? We can hear your phone. Hey, are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah. What's up? <laughs> hey, so are we still talking about uh, uh, horror stories and the transit and everything on that stuff? Yeah, let's do it. Horror stories. <laughs> what's your Hello? story? Yeah, what's your story? Well, I was waiting on the F train a couple nights ago, and I was blowing this guy, and he shot his whole fucking load in my face. Oh, oh. That sucks that when that happens. <laughs> that sucks when that happens. I, Thank you for the call. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I missed, what was he I missed my train, you little fuck, and it was you, wasn't it, you little bastard? You didn't even kick me, you fuck. Dude, what's your problem? Dude, what's your damage? You got some anger, you got a man. Okay, he got that a jerk face didn't on. have much of an arc. I know. <laughs> so let's go ahead. Let's do another one. PJ, if you want to come up. Hallie, what's our next fact? Okay. This person's fact is, I was once arrested for skinny dipping and then saying to the cop, fuck off, pig. I was arrested for skinny dipping and then saying to the cop, fuck off, pig. <laughs> no, I already did mine. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Bethany. No. <laughs> you can't say whose it was, because no, then you would know. No, we can. Why? Because then no, you'd be whose able to know. Whose was it? No, no, supposed to... <coughs> we already worked out the bit. We already... uh, who did that? I want you to get hit. That was me. You did that? Yeah. Fuck off, pig. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Whatever you want. 
whatever you want, man. Engage your core. Engage your core. Engage your core. Okay. 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 Hold back. Hold back. Engage that core. job and uh i was uh i would say that besser was me and then sitting like this in a chair was a black man uh which is important because all of a sudden i looked down and there was a huge black cock touching my pants <laughs> huge at like imagine how big that cock was <laughs> touching my pants and i looked down and then i just got up and i was like oh! it was terrible if it happens now though i'd punch that man in the dick I was, back then, I didn't understand how to react to that. You throw it between the cars. <laughs> <laughs> throw it out the window. Let's take a caller. Yeah, caller. Uh, I'm, I'm coming back to life now. Caller, you are on the air. Welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. How can we help you? Hey, Chris. That was bad. Yeah, he came back. Is this Walter? Yeah, man. Walter, welcome to the show. Walter is calling in. Walter's our only fan. Walter is calling. Walter! Walter, for those of you guys who don't know, he's our fan. He's the only guy who likes this show. He calls in every week. Uh, Walter, how are you doing? What's on your mind this week? Good, good. I've been good. Feeling better. Not reason why I'm not there today. But hopefully to, I'll make it for next week. Yeah, man. you got to come back into the studio. So do you have any... Yeah, money? You have yeah any i got to go back. I, just, I, I actually have a story for the topping today. And um, I just wanted to say that I was flying back to Miami from here, from New York, like two months ago. And right before landing, the asshole sitting next to me, far, um, just like it happened to you. And I just have to wave the magazine to my face because it was just nasty and disgusting. And this idiot was laughing with his family right next to me. It was so upsetting. I just wanted to stand up and fart in his face, too. You know, you wanted right in front of his family. Your urge was to stand up and fart in a man's face. Yeah, I just wanted to do that, but I, I just... They didn't have any gas on me. <laughs> it must have been really bad because having met you, you're one of the nicest people I've ever met. What? You're one of the nicest people I've ever met, so his fart must have been horrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You, that's what happens. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Well, Walter, thanks for checking in. We love you. Thanks for the call. We'll talk to you next week. Love you guys. I love you. Let's take another one. Caller, you are on the air. Welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. Hi. Hi, who's this? Alyssa. Oh. Checking in with Alyssa. Checking in with Alyssa. Alyssa, what's up? So Alyssa's our fan. She's 15. She's a huge comedy nerd. She checks in. She talks to um, comedians she admires on the air. She lets us know what it's, what it's like to be 15 right now. So Alyssa, what's on your mind? Um... Not much. I'm actually... I, well, I'd like to say I'm watching this on a phone, and I didn't know that that was possible. I didn't either. That's awesome, man. 2011. Hell yeah. Yeah, and I'm in Disney World. <laughs> You're wasting... You are on a trip to Disney World right now, wasting time doing this? Well, it's 11 o'clock at night. There's not much... And I'm not walking around. I'm, I must have my, you know, I'm in my room, but it's too I, late to walk around. I feel like one day you will look back and regret spending any time on your vacation doing this. I don't think it's too late to walk around Disney World at 11. It's a pretty safe space. <laughs> the magic I know, light parade, but right? I like to sleep, and there's all these kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know that feeling. Damn so do you have, any, do you have any... There's all these 
people my age, and I don't like that. You run, you run with an older crowd, huh, Alyssa? <laughs> well, I, I want to clear out Disney World, be by myself, and walk around is what I want. Sounds like you want to kill yourself. No, <laughs> Shannon, you have a long history of saying inappropriate things to Alyssa. <laughs> this is the second time I've said anything And it's the second time you've talked to her. That makes it history. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Alyssa! Just are... being honest, that's what it sounds like. I think it's a cry for Wait, help. I can't, uh, I can't really hear, but what? Uh, Alyssa, are your parents rich? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I, I'm on the porch of my room because I get nervous when they listen <laughs> oh, because if they were rich, you could do what, um, what's that, Nick, uh, what's that, um, Tom Cruise did for his kids, uh, he shut down all of Disneyland so his kid could have it all privately, but that cost, like, a hundred thousand dollars or something like that, but if your parents were that rich, you could, you know, they could do what, like, Tom Cruise did for his kids. Random Gene, it's the Chris Gethard Show, not the Random Gene Show. Yeah. <laughs> Random Gene. It is a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, it is. It is. Flat fee, a hundred thousand. Straight up, Barnett. It is. It is. Random Gene, I love you. Really, really. They're, real. sleep, they're trying to sleep, or they're watching TV, or something. It's true. Well, I'm sorry your vacation's being so disrupted. I'm glad we could provide an oasis from the horror that is Disney World. <laughs> Alyssa, thank you for calling, and we'll talk to you uh, next time you call in. Cool. Thank you. Great. Thank Bye. you. The reason I had to cut Alyssa off, because she's one of my favorite callers, is that we have a very, very, very great musical guest tonight who I'm so excited to welcome. Uh, I think you guys are going to love these guys. If you are on Twitter, if you're watching online, tell everybody to tune in right now, because you do not want to miss our guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Dolce Nacar Brigade! <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, of the day, Dalton Goff is great. Yeah. Onion is the underdog, ladies and gentlemen. That was amazing. Uh, I opened my onion up and there's a human fetus inside of it. Really? Yeah. Wow. How, how amazingly fucked up. Yeah. Well, I'm really sorry you had to experience that, Shannon. No, I'm, I'm excited about it. Okay, good. I use it as my own. I'm glad. Yes, Random Gene, what's up? I have a gift for the human fish. Oh, you have a gift for the human fish, okay. So Random Gene brought the human fish stuffed seal. He's showing it the onion that the Dolce & Copper Gate has given him. He also has cut his finger. Oh! The human fish, let's show it to the camera. He actually, ew. Human fish eats raw onions, who knew? Oh, and he's, he's rejected your gift like a faulty kidney. He'll take it. We've got to move on, ladies and gentlemen. Every week, we have a uh, team of filmmakers and animators called the Lone Cornmeal Machine. You can tweet at them at Lone Cornmeal. Give them a suggestion. They will prepare an animation based on your suggestion. This week, our friend Michael Kane asked them uh, if they could explain through animation why keyboards on a computer are arranged the way they are, why typewriters and keyboards are arranged like that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see what the Lone Cornmeal Machine had to say. <laughs> Who knows what will happen? I haven't a clue. No one knows what will happen next. It all depends on you. Can't see round the corner when I'm going round the bend. No one knows what will happen or if this madness will ever end. How did it all begin? How did our world find its ultimate shape? This is the question many of us have pondered. They say that in the beginning there was the end, 
Then there was also space and time. Before long, everything fell into place until we began to feel as if this was how it was meant to be all along. But there is a forgotten chapter to this tale taking place a long time ago the earliest days of civilization. Society needs leadership. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Great ideas for the greater good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. We need a leader. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I could be a leader. Yeah. Hey, did you just say you were some kind of leader? Oh, this guy a leader? That's what he says. Yeah, I'm a leader. Uh, I got all kinds of good ideas for how we can organize our society. Really cool stuff that I think would work pretty well. I mean, we could try out different things. Uh, see what works, what doesn't. Uh, I think I'd be really good at it if you gave me a chance. Hey, I got some ideas too. Fuck it, it's not hard, just do whatever. Are you a leader? Um, yeah, I'm a leader. I'm the best leader. I'm great. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm impressive. Oh, no, I, I don't think I'm going to get a chance to be a leader. Hey, you trying to be a leader? Big mistake. Oh, oh, freak your neck. Ow. I'll try to be a leader when I want to be a leader. Oh, stop! Oh, I won. Unfortunately, good men do not always become great leaders. And great leaders are not always good men. The world we live in is the legacy of those who triumphed. <laughs> I did it! I did it! I'm the leader! Not because they were better, but because they got what they wanted. He deserves it more than me. These cruel and selfish fuckers are the men yeah. who built our world. The world we live in today. And we owe them everything. everything. Oh, what can we do? You can be Napoleon and I'll be a Waterloo. We'll be back to fight again someday. Till then we'll just be on our way. That was the Lone Corn Meal Machine, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, you can go on Twitter, Lone Corn Meal, make suggestions. They will uh, make videos based on your suggestion. In the meantime, uh, I will already say I've got a bruise forming from that kick. I don't know if you can see it in our stage light. But let's go ahead. Let's do another fact guess. Well, PJ came all the way out and brought his gloves and stuff. I don't even want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chicago is my favorite place in the world because my whole family lives there. Oh, shit. I know for a fact there are two Chicago natives on our panel. John and Bethany are both from fucking Chicago. I know. That sounds like something Bethany would say like that. I don't know if John would say it like that. But John's also looking at the floor with such guilt. <laughs> Chicago's my favorite place in the world because my whole family lives there. Do I want to make the easy choice of Bethany? Do I want to go with John? Knowing John is a very, very nice, He's sweet guy. You should pick me because you know I've already given a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess Bethany. Yes! Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I know, but there's like, Pester's got Chicago roots, Mulaney has Chicago roots, you picked... No, Jeez. but you did that well. It that was, was scary. Well handled, that we're both from there, but that's more her Her syntax, phrasing. Yeah. I can't tell you how scared I am to get hit again. It was so bad. A when blinding I showed white up pain. Tonight, I was like, because I didn't know what it was for, and I was just like, oh, was my question, was my thing too easy? And they were like, no, 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 it's fine. And I'm so glad. Okay. Because <laughs> I was going to go really, oh, wow. The first okay. The first fact I submitted was, my name is Matt Besser. I would have gotten that one. You would have gotten that? But that's something fucking Shannon would say just to get me hit in the mm. stomach. <laughs> uh, I think we have callers. Caller, are you on the line? Welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. Hey, how you doing there, Chris? Hey. Uh, Marlon who's, Brando. Who's is this Marlon Brando number two from last week? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Last week, there are two imposters that called your show. I'm really sorry about that. This is the real Marlon Brando. You're an entirely different Marlon Brando from the two that called last week. That's right. See, I want to tell you, I really had this, had this bad experience one time on a train. I had just picked up some dinner rolls, and I started choking on them. And, uh, you know, like, I was choking, and I was choking, no one was helping me. So I had to punch my Marlon phone Brando, in the stomach you so to get much it for out. <laughs> I'm sure we'll hear from another Marlon Brando next week. I think we have another caller. Caller, are you on the line? If you can hear me, we're talking to you. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it? It's good. How are you? What's on your mind? 
Uh, this is Joe. I actually had a question for Bethany. Bethany, okay. Uh, are you the one who said you're afraid of garages? Oh, I am afraid of garages. Bethany, you're afraid of garages. Okay, so caller, why do you bring this up? I remember that story. I just wanted to know what is the fear? What exactly? You never explained that. Uh, oh, my rape? fear of garages. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. I guess my fear of garages stems from the fact that if I were a rapist, I would wait for people in the garage. So, so Besser nailed it. It's rape. It's a fear of rape, Colin. <laughs> Rapists know it. Okay, I got it. It's pretty interesting, actually. Okay, well, thank you so, so you much. you want to ask her out now? Thank you. <laughs> he, this man's trying to convince you. No, that's okay. <laughs> what did he say? No, that's okay. All right. Thank you very okay. much, Colin. Thank you very much. Hey, human fish, what's on your mind right now? Uh, the eagles versus the Knicks. The Eagles, so we don't know. We don't know if it's the band or the football team versus the Knicks, the basketball team. Or it could just be like Nick Nolte. Oh, it could be. It could be an army of men named Nick. So we have no idea. Both. I, I'm going to choose the band, the Eagles, versus the men, the Knicks. No, you don't. Sorry. Or it could be the bird. It could be birds. Oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> so, human fish, who wins? So he gives us choices, and we give him choices, too? Well, he just lets us know what's on his mind, then he lets us know who wins. I don't think he's a fucking fish to be wow. quiet. Wow! Oh. Wow! Everything I've seen since I've been here gives me clues that he's not a fish. Wow! Fish! Oh, don't wow. walk on land! Fish don't have hair! Fish don't eat onions, they get sautéed in fucking onions. Yeah. Wow! Human fish, how do you want to defend yourself on this one? <laughs> a fish would have picked a seal oh, right seal. away. Yeah. Or the it. fish would have feared a seal because he thought the seal right, would so eat it. so he wouldn't put it in his hand. Wow, major controversy unfolding on weekend <laughs> of the Chris Gethard Show. Never has it occurred to us, maybe the human fish is just a guy in a bathing suit. It's highly human possible. I like you, Chris. Right now. I, I don't want you to be conned by some <laughs> I, sly New Yorker. I feel like maybe you're right. Maybe this whole time I let's, thought I... Let's see if he can breathe underwater. Let's get a bucket That's and see the if the proof, can breathe Chris. Yeah. That's the proof, Chris. That's the proof. Next <laughs> week. Next week, we will bring a large bucket of water, and we will see how long the human fish <laughs> survive. He does not seem phased by this challenge. He's just enjoying his that's onions. A good, that's a good evidence that he might be a fish, that he's not afraid that he's going to get... And make him eat a worm and some crickets. How about okay. that? Yeah. The human fish is wearing a Band-Aid. He is. Okay. The Let's, Knicks. The Knicks! <laughs> the Knicks! So, caller, human fish has the timing of a man. Um, caller, we have a caller on the line. Caller, welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. Yo, I'm doing a stupid impression of, no, I'm just kidding, yo. What's up? I think this is the guy who likes to tell us too. Hey, Chris. What's up? Smoke, weed, sun. <laughs> Okay, this guy calls us from time to time and just tells us to smoke weed. Hey, Matt, hey, Matt Besser. Yeah, give me some weed. This one time we were hanging out, you don't remember, we were smoking weed, son. <laughs> Was this the truth? I walked away from you? <laughs> yeah. You said, yo, this kid is weird, and you walked away from me. <laughs> all right, well, that's story. all I really got to contribute. I'm going to go take a weed nap. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Smoke weed. Smoke weed. Do you have another caller? Caller, welcome to the show. Caller, are you there? Welcome to the Gethard Show. Hey, what's happening, guys? It's Murph. Hey, Murph, how are you? Murph is on the show a lot. He's a good friend of ours. He looks like one of the reservoir dogs, is what one of our callers pointed out. Mm. So, Murph, what's on your mind? Uh, just calling to uh, relay a fun transportation story that I have. Um, I, was, uh, I was riding the 5 train home to Crown Heights one night. It was late, probably about, I don't know, 3.30 in the morning or so. And I made fast friends on the train with a 50-plus-year-old Trinidadian woman. 
who may or may not have been homeless. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, but, okay. you know, at first she just kept relaying stories of, of how her, her crippled son was a burden on her and she wanted to just kill him and get it over with. Okay. Uh, we finally found some common ground on some different Spike Lee movies. And then uh, <laughs> as, as I realized, I was a little inebriated, as I realized I missed my stop by about four stops. So I was, uh, I was pretty deep. And I realized I had to get off the train, cross the platform, and get back on. So as I get off the train, she follows me off. And I'm immediately thinking, okay, probably homeless, probably just riding the train all night if she can just, you know, get right off. So then she crosses the platform and she starts rubbing her uh, genital area on my leg and saying, like, come on, let's bump, let's bump. I know you got some money, let's bump. Okay. So I'm thinking bump, I'm thinking possibly there's some drugs involved, I didn't know, but I was open to whatever. So I started thinking about it and I was like, I'm definitely not going to have sex with this woman, uh, but... I started looking at the mouth. She was missing some teeth. She didn't really look. The mouth did not look clean at all. Okay. So I decided, uh, you know, it might be possible. If uh, I looked at my wallet, I had $12. I figured, let's just get a weird tug job on the subway platform. <laughs> so I gave her the $12 to kind of jerk me off, to kind of appease her. And also at the same time, I was in a very weird headspace at the time. Uh, so I, uh, so I, I, I gave her the $12. She started going down my pants. I couldn't get an erection at all. So I just called the whole thing off. She walked down the other end of the platform and followed me and just started laughing out loud. So my, I guess, male ego at that point was thinking she was laughing because I couldn't get an erection. I was like, I assure you, ma'am, my penis works fine. It's got nothing to do with that. It's just the circumstances. She kept laughing. I, the train finally pulled in. I got on, rode home in shame. Wow. While she was tugging on your dick, did you talk about do the right thing in Crooklyn? Or? <laughs> 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 all I can do is giggle. Like all, all I can do is giggle. Like it sounds like she has just as much a right to call with her yeah, yeah. subway story yeah. about about the same incident from her perspective. Murph, thank you so much for the call. I'm glad things are going well. All right, my man. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Have now, a fun show. We will talk soon. In the meantime, I'm going to ask my friend PJ to come back up. Oh. The studio audience does not like this, <laughs> booing the fact that it might happen. Like but we're running out of time. Who liked it? Like so this. Rob Malone liked seeing me get hit. I don't like you getting yeah. hurt, but I like seeing you get hit. Okay. <laughs> so you like the sensation, like the, okay. It's really exciting for me. Okay, so let's have another fact. I've lived in an apartment with a Star Wars themed bathroom. Oh. I've lived in an apartment with a Star Wars themed bathroom. He looks right at the band. Bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I did immediately think band. I've got two guesses, Hallie and Bill. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's a story either one of them would have. It's a wholesome story, so I'm thinking Hallie, because Bill's stories are generally more fucked up. <laughs> but I'm going to guess Bill. No? Oh, Fuck. Yeah. Who was it? It's me. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Your core. <laughs> it can't be to the leg again. I'll no, get, no, no, I'll no, get no, too no. fucked yeah. up. Maybe like a punch. Oh. Oh. A punch is better than a kick, right? Yeah. Oh, this I mean, one, this bit is so painful <laughs> that you and I are plotting how to make it yeah, not as like, awful as it could be. Yeah. What's the word? What's? It's all gonna be bad, right? Yeah. Just fucking hit him. Yeah. yeah. The other leg. Like... Don't kill me too much. You want a stomach? Yeah. Oh. oh okay. What else am I gonna do? No, I don't know. What am I gonna do? What else am I gonna do? Cause I got a mic shoulder. pack on this leg. I'm not taking it to the shoulder. I'll break my fucking collarbone. Have you considered taking out the mic pack? <laughs> <laughs> but the leg. You're saying leg. Like the leg wasn't the worst experience of my entire life. I think stomach, right? Nah, I just, uh, it'll be bad. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. uh, I fucked that one up. I fucked it up. I blocked it. Oh. What'd you have for lunch? We'll find out. Oh, I heard that. So I think we have a caller. <laughs> caller, you're on the line. Welcome to the Chris Kettner Show. What's on your mind? Um, yeah, this is Mike. Hi. Hi, how are you? What do you want to talk about? Um, two things. First, I think you should stop doing bits where you get the shit eaten out of you. It's a valid point. Thank you for that. It relates and, um, to, it relates to both my own self-hatred and my desperate story. need for viewers. 
I'm sorry. Never mind. What else did you want to talk about? <laughs> um, I want to talk about my public transportation horror story. Okay, we're listening. I, uh, the first time I ever rode the subway, it was late at night. I get on. No one's on the entire train. The stop after I get on, this old man gets on, sits down right next to me, and he smells like a urinal cake. Okay. He's, I try and get up. And I moved across, and he moved across as well. So I have my backpack with me. I figure, what can I do to get this guy to leave me alone the rest of this train ride? And I just happen to have a Bible in my backpack, so I just start opening it and pretending to read the Bible in hopes that this man would leave me alone. And um, he got off at my, or he got off, I got off, and he stayed on the train. Wow. And that's is my public transportation horror story. So you thwarted a smelly homeless man with a Bible? <laughs> yes. Wow, maybe he was like a fucking vampire or something. <laughs> maybe. Well, I'm glad you got a mild chuckle out of my weak <laughs> joke. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. Are we going here? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, on, thir on Tuesday the 16th, you should check them out at Stage on Hair. <laughs> if you are in Fairfax, Pennsylvania, the 17th, Wednesday. Virginia. Oh, wait, that's Virginia? It says Pennsylvania on here, but I'll go with what you say, sir. Virginia, go to the old fire station number three on the 17th. <laughs> New York City, go to Fontana's on Friday the 19th. Most of our viewers in New York, we want to see you guys all at Fontana's on the 19th. I want everybody in here to get your onions back up in the air and welcome back to the stage. You can check them out at DolceNicoleBrigade.com. They're on Facebook. They're on Twitter. Follow them. Our friends and yours. Onions are the underdog. Onion is the underdog. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Dolce Nicole Brigade. Baltimore, on fire! Baltimore! 
Pokemon on fire! Pokemon on fire! Pokemon on fire! Adults in the car for Gay. <laughs> Pennsylvania on the 16th, Virginia on the 17th, 19th, back in New York at Fontana's. Go see them. Twitter at Dolchnikov B. Follow them. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Ben, everyone in our studio audience, John, Matt, Shannon, Jean, Bethany, Dave, the LLC, everybody watching at home, please spread the word. Word of mouth is the only way anyone's ever going to find out about this show. So thank you guys very much for checking it out. Have a great night, and uh, we'll see you next week. Please help spread the word. Live stream, we're about to cut off. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>